وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى um, Before we take the Sharah of the Kitab Nawaqid al-Islam I wanted to read the Kitab this Risala which is called Manhaj Yawmi Litalib al-Ilm This Kitab is the daily routine I mean the daily methodology of a student of knowledge the daily routine of a student of knowledge um, this is actually a risala, a letter that Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah sent to a young man. This is what it is. Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin wrote a letter to a young boy who asked him a question. And Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah advised him accordingly. And I think this is very important that we, we cover this book. I think it's of great importance that we do go over this book due to many factors that we have, as much as we need to memorize the Qur'an and we need to memorize a hadith and we need, we need to learn, we also need to perfect our dealings and our actions and the way we are and the way we carry ourselves. Brothers and sisters, I think it's of very great importance, things that we need to do. Many of us, some of us, have not probably been blessed to have studied from a very young age. So we started to practice when we became old. And so that we misunderstood the concept of learning, what it really is. How should it be done? Some have only understood from seeking knowledge to just memorize Nusus texts and having uh, the knowledge of books. And that's all knowledge and seeking knowledge is. But it's far greater than that. And by reading this Risala, will see the advice of this noble Imam, Al-Allamah Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymin. Shaykh ibn Uthaymin, I hope he is ghaniyun al tarif I don't think he needs to be told who he is. Rahimahullah ta'ala, rahmatan wasi'ah. Shaykh ibn Uthaymin, I don't think any one of you here doesn't know who he is, right? If you haven't come across the life of this man, then it's, a really, it's really a shame. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah is mentioned next to the two great Imams of this time as well. <coughs> Sheikh Abd Aziz Ibn Baz and Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani rahimahullah. These three are the Nujum of this time, they're the stars of this time. This Risala, the author who wrote it is who? Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Uthaymin, he died. And the boy that he wrote it to also died. Both of them are not alive today. مَاتَ الشَّيْخُ وَمَاتَ الطَّالِبُ فَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمَا The Sheikh died and also the boy who he wrote the letter to has also passed away and died as well. <coughs> the Sheikh says in the Risala, he starts by saying مِنْ مُحَمَّدْ الصَّالِحِ الْعُثَيْمِينِ إِلَى بْنِ And he mentioned the boy's name. حَفِظَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى May Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala protect him. And this was by the time the Shaykh wrote it. When he mentioned the boy's name, the young man, he said Hafidahullah. And generally the word Hafidahullah is used for what? A person who's alive, generally. But now we know that the boy has what? Has passed away. Then the Shaykh says, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu wa ba'du. So the Shaykh says, Assalamu alaykum. May peace be upon you. Wa rahmatullahi. May Allah's mercy be upon you. Wa barakatu. And Allah's baraka, blessings be upon you. Wa ba'du to proceed. The Shaykh says, 
فقد سألتني you asked me بارك الله فيك may Allah سبحانه وتعالى place blessing over you and أضع لك for me to place for you you've asked for me to put together for you منهجا تسير عليه في حياتك you asked for me to place for you or to author for you or to put for you a methodology which you should tread on Allahu Akbar this boy he knew that Sheikh Muthaymin was the right person to ask so he asked the Sheikh to write him a methodology in which he should tread on and that's how the students should always be come back to the ulama and ask them of advices the Sheikh says wa inni la as'alullah ta'ala an yuwaffiqana jami'an first the Sheikh said i ask allah that he gives both of us the ability tawfiq means that allah gives us istita'ah the quwwah the strength and the ability lima fihi al-huda wal rashad in that which is in it guidance and uprightness was sawab was sadad and that which is correct and that is which is that which is according to the kitab and the sunnah wa an yaj'alana ask allah also to make us hudat muhtadin ones who are guided and one who guide those around them salihin allah makes us people who are righteous and noble muslihin people who also perfect and bring nobility out of others <coughs> فأقول I will then say to you now أولا so the Sheikh breaks the رسالة into points things that he so he breaks it into uh, how a student of knowledge should be with Allah and then how, how should a student of knowledge be with the Prophet and the Messenger and then how should a student of knowledge be in terms of seeking knowledge he talks about all of that he says أولا the first one مع الله عز وجل with Allah تبارك وتعالى with Allah, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he starts the first point of his letter. How should a student of knowledge be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah azza wa jalla. Number one, he says, Ihris, strive. A student of knowledge, strive. Ala an takuna da'iman. For you to always be. Ma'allahi azza wa jalla. Mustahdiran azamatahu. One who the greatness of Allah is present with. Be an individual. Da'iman always. Ma'allahi azza wa jalla mustahdaran azamata. You're always is present with you all the time. The greatness of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Mutafakkiran fi ayati. And also be one who always thinks and ponders and contemplates in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala fi ayati al kawniya His universal signs. Be a person who always contemplates and ponders over Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's universal signs مثل خلق السماوات والأرض like the creating of the samawat, the heavens and the earth be one who ponders and contemplates over that وما أودع فيهما and that which Allah has placed in it من بالغ حكمته that which Allah has placed in it that, that shows and indicates Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is extreme wisdom. وَبَاهِرَ قُدْرَتِهِ And Allah tabarakahu wa ta'ala is unlimited ability. وَعَظِيمِ رَحْمَتِهِ وَمِنَّتِهِ And it also shows Allah tabarakahu wa ta'ala His great mercy and His great blessing over His slaves. And also to contemplate and think over وَآيَاتِهِ الشَّرْعِيَةِ That you also contemplate and you ponder over Allah tabarak wa ta'ala his verses the Quran there's ayat which are kawniya which are universal signs and there are the legislational signs that you ponder and you contemplate over the legislational signs alati ba'atha biha rusulahu in which Allah has sent his messengers with wala siyama especially khatimuhu Muhammad the last and the final one of them Nabiullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Let's step over this point now, this first nukhta, the first point. A talib ilm, a student of knowledge, gives so much importance to and gives so much seriousness to this point which is at tafakkur wa tadabbur. The person thinks and ponders and contemplates and they ponder over Allah's malakutillah, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, his universe in which he created. And that the person also looks over the Quran look what Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said 
that the people who ponder over Allah Taala's universal signs are the smart, intellectual ones. Allah says in the Quran, "In fi khalqi samawati wal ard, wa khilaf al layl wal nahar la ayat, la ayat al ulul al bab." That the signs that are in the the earth, in the heavens, in fi khalqi samawati, the creating of the heavens and the earth. Is the ayat? It's signs, but it's not a sign for everybody. Not everyone sees it as a sign. It's a sign for who? The ayat in the al Albab. It's a sign for the people who are smart, the people who are truly intellectual, the people who are ulul al Albab, have aql, they have great minds. The ayat in the Albab. They are the ones who do what? Alladina yadkurun Allah qiyaman wa qudan wa ala jumubihim wa yatafakkarun fi khalq al-sabawati wal-ard. Rabbana. ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار. They are the ones who are they remember Allah when they're standing in prayer, when they're sitting they also remember Him, when they're lying in their beds just before they sleep they also remember Him سبحانه وتعالى. And guess what they say? Their contemplation and their pondering and their analyzing of everything it doesn't just make it a mere contemplation but rather it turns into a a great manifestation. They say, "Rabbana ma khalaqta hada baatilan." Oh Allah, you didn't create this all aimlessly, without no purpose behind it. Subhanaka faqina adab al-nar. And then from that, they say, "Oh Allah, protect us from the hellfire." Well, that you can look at the universe today and looking at what's in it. It's actually meant to bring you closer to Allah and not not to take you away from what that there's a creation that created this universe. It doesn't. It more proves there is a Creator that created it, and that it, you should more say, "Rabbana ma khalaqta hada baatilan, Subhanaka faqina adab al nar." If a person looked at a gadget today, and the more they looked at it, the more they were amazed with what, what kind, what was used in it, and the method in which it was made, the more they're amazed with the people who made it, how they made it, right? Not that they become uh, ones that say that this phone was it randomly came out of nowhere. So the person ponders over what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created. Abdullah ibn Abbas he said, he said, "Bittu inda khalati maymuna radiyallahu taala anha." Abdullah ibn Abbas said, "I spent a night over the house of my ma auntie, um, my maternal auntie maymuna, the wife of the Prophet." فتحدث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مع أهله ساعة ثم رقدا. Then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he spoke with his wife by maymuna. The night, and then he went to sleep. فلما كان ثلث الليل للأخير, when it was the last third of the night, قعد فنظر إلى السماء. The Prophet sat down, عليه الصلاة والسلام, فنظر إلى السماء. The Prophet looked at the sky. فقال هذا السيد, إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار الآيات لولي الألباب. The Prophet said that. ثم قام he stood up, عليه الصلاة والسلام. فَتَوَضَّعَ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he done wudu وَاسْتَنَّ and he did his sunnah عليه الصلاة والسلام فصلى إحدى عشر حقعة he prayed 11 حقعة ثم أذن بلال then Bilal did the adhan فصلى ركعتين he prayed 2 حقعة ثم خرج فصلى الصبح then the Prophet came out and he prayed صلاة الصبح Wastanak and also it means the Prophet used his miswak alayhi salatu salam. Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that. So what do you take from that? The pondering and the contemplating of the Prophet made him stand up and do what? It made him stand up and go and pray. Alayhi salatu salam. Because wallahi the qa'idah is wa fi kulli ayatin tadullu ala anna Allah wahidun. Everything around us and everything that we see, it indicates that there's only one creator. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ the poet he said فَوَاعَجَبًا كَيْفَ يُعْصَ الْإِلَاهُ Amazement is how is Allah disobeyed subhanahu wa ta'ala أَمْ كَيْفَ يَجْحَدُهُ الْجَاحِدُ And how is the stubborn one stubborn towards Allah tabarak wa ta'ala وَفِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ لَهُ آيَتٌ When every single thing there is a sign in it تَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ وَاحِدٌ That indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is is one وَلِلَّهِ فِي كُلِّ تَحْرِيكَةٍ Everything that moves وَتَسْكِينَةٍ and everything that's calm and that doesn't move أَبَدًا شَاهِدٌ all of them are always witnesses so everything has دَلَائِلَ بَرَاهِينَ everything has an indication and evidence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is it that it shows us 
kamalu khalqihi, the complete creation of Allah wa ta'ala of everything. And this brothers, wallahi, it helps a person. It really does. And it makes a person a student of knowledge, especially this is things that increases iman. The second thing that the Shaykh Rahimullah mentioned, he says, أَن يَكُونَ قَلْبُكَ مَمْلُوءًا بِمَحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لِمَا يَغْضُوكَ بِهِ مِنَ النِّعَمِ وَيَدْفَعُ عَنْكَ مِنَ النِّقَمِ وَلَا سِيَّمَا نِعْمَةُ الْإِسْلَامِ وَالْإِسْتِقَامَةِ عَلَيْهِ حَتَّى يَكُونَ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكَ حَتَّى يَكُونَ أَحَبَّ شَيْءٍ إِلَيْكَ The Shaykh says here, أَن يَكُونَ قَلْبُكَ That your heart is مَمْلُوء and filled up with what? بِمَحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ The love of Allah لِمَا يَغْضُوكَ بِهِ مِنَ النِّعَمِ Because of that which Allah provides for you and gives to you of blessings. وَيَدْفَعُ عَنْكَ And that which Allah repels from you subhanahu wa ta'ala مِنَ النِّقَمِ And that which Allah prevents from you in terms of what? Calamities and hardship and pain. وَلَا سِيَّمَا And especially, especially نِعْمَةُ الْإِسْلَامِ The blessings of Islam which Allah gave you subhanahu wa ta'ala وَالْإِسْتِقَامَةِ and the blessings of being upright and steadfast, Allah gave that to you. Hatta yakuna ahabba shayin ilayka. Until you become the most, or until he becomes the most beloved one to you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Shaykh rahimahullah here, he talks about filling your stomach with the love of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are things that aid a person to fill in his heart the love of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Shaykh mentioned what can help you increase the love of Allah. What is it? To look at what He has blessed you with and what He has given you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at Allah's ni'am, the blessings that He has given and He has placed over you. Look at the health He has given you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the time that Allah has given you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the clothing and the house. Look at the food in which he has given you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also look at the greatest of it all. Look at the fact that Allah gave you Islam and Tawheed. Many have been prevented from that. If you look at a surah in the Quran, it's called, it's called Suratu, Suratu Al-Ni'am. Suratu Al-Ni'am, meaning it's it's the surah that mentions the ni'am of Allah wa ta'ala. And this surah is surah al-Nahl. Surah al-Nahl is called surah al-Ni'am. If you look at the first ni'mah that Allah mentions is what? The ni'mah of la ilaha illallah. Allah says, Ata amrullahi fala tasta'ajiluh. Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushrikun. Yunazzilu al-malaikata bil-ruhi min amrihi ala man yasha'u min ibadih an anziru annahu لا إله إلا أنا إلا أنا فعبو فاتقون. What's the first thing Allah starts with? سبحانه وتعالى عما يشركون ينزل الملائكة بالروح من أمره على من يشاء من عباده أن أنذر أنه لا إله إلا أنا إلا أنا فاتقون. First نعمة that Allah mentions that He's given His slaves is what? لا إله إلا الله. ولذلك it is the greatest thing Allah has bestowed upon us. Look what Allah said in Surah Al-Hujurat. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانَ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَكَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْعِصِّيَانَ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الرَّاشِدُونَ فَضْلًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَنِعْمَةِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ فَضْلًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَنِعْمَةِ This is a fadl, it's a virtue from Allah. وَنِعْمَةِ It's a blessing from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another, in that same surah, what does he say? يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا قُلْ لَا تَمُنُّوا عَلَيَّ إِسْلَامَكُمْ بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّوا عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ هَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِيمَانِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا You guys are trying to say that you've done a favor for Allah to become a Muslim. No. Allah has actually favored you by giving you what? By giving you Iman and Islam. This is a favor from Allah. Look what Allah said in another اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم Today I have completed your religion for you وأتممت عليكم نعمتي And I have established my blessing onto you What is it that he was talking about that day? What blessing is it that Allah completed for the believers then? نعمت الإسلام The message of Islam So this is the greatest blessing that a person can be given And it's from the greatest ni'am 
ولذلك ابن رجب رحمه الله says in his kitab كلمة الإخلاص وتحقيق معناه page 53 he says كلمة التوحيد لها فضائل عظيمة لا يمكنها هنا استقصاؤها that كلمة التوحيد لا إلى الله has many virtues he said it's not possible for somebody to bring all of its virtues together he wrote a whole book in it and then look what he says وفي هذه from its virtue is آية أول ما عدد على عباده من النعم في سورة النعم التي تسمى سورة النعم سورة النحل ابن رجب says that from the virtues of لا إله إلا الله and كلمة التوحيد is what that when Allah was naming the blessings of his slaves he started with the blessing of سورة لا إله إلا الله سورة النحل ولهذا قال ابن عيينة and because of that سفيان ابن عيينة said ما أنعم الله على عبد من العباد Allah has not bestowed upon a slave from his slaves نعمة a blessing أعظم من أن عرفهم لا إله إلا الله greater than the fact that he, he allowed them to know what لا إله إلا الله means سفيان ابن عيينة said that there is not a blessing that Allah has bestowed upon his slaves greater then the fact that he has allowed them to what? He has allowed them to know what La ilaha illallah means. It's the, grace, the greatest thing that you've been given. That many of the people you see today, they don't have that blessing. You have that blessing. The Prophet's uncle didn't get that blessing, Abu Talib. And the Prophet really wanted him to take Islam. إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah wanted Sorry, the Prophet wanted his uncle to be guided, but his uncle wasn't guided to Islam. Allah gave it to you. The third point the Sheikh says. So we have to feel that, brothers. A student of knowledge, every day you wake up, you, the, one of the things that you're happy about is the fact that you're still a Muslim. And that it really brings joy to you and happiness. And you're also happy that Allah made you subhanahu wa ta'ala from the people who have understood the sunnah. It's also something that you're happy about. These are from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. The third point that the Sheikh mentions is أن يكون قلبك مملوءا بتعظيم الله عز وجل حتى يكون في نفسك أعظم شيء وباجتماع محبة الله تعالى وتعظيمه في قلبك تستقيم على طاعته قائما بما أمر بما أمر به لمحبتك إياه تاركا لما نهى عنه لتعظيمك له The Sheikh رحمه الله says أن يكون قلبك مملوءا that your heart is filled with what? بتعظيم الله of the veneration of Allah عز وجل حتى يكون في نفسك أعظم شيء until Allah becomes the greatest thing in your heart It's another thing that you need to focus on is that Allah is the greatest thing in your heart that Allah fills your heart سبحانه وتعالى you fill your heart with Allah تبارك وتعالى's glorification and Allah تبارك وتعالى's veneration وَبِجْتِبَاعِ مَحَبَّةَ اللَّهِ Combining the love of Allah وَتَعْظِيمِهِ and the venerating of Allah فِي قَلْبِكَ in your heart تَسْتَقِيمُ عَلَىٰ طَاعَتِهِ will allow you to be steadfast upon his obedience so these two look loving him subhanahu wa ta'ala and venerating him those two things, those two components are going to bring about for you those two he says, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, وَتَعْظِيمِهِ فِي قَلْبِكَ تَسْتَقِيمُ عَلَىٰ طَاعَتِهِ You will be steadfast upon his obedience. قَائِمًا بِمَا أَمَرَكَ بِهِ And you'll be standing up to what he has commanded you to do. لِمَحَبَّتِكَ إِيَّهِ Because of the love that you have for him. تَارِكًا لِمَا نَهَا عَنْهُ لِتَعْظِيمِكَ لَهُ And you're also going to leave off that which he prohibited you from because of your honor, the veneration and the honoring that you have for him. So when you do something, you're doing it out of love for him. And when you stay away from something, you're doing it out of what? Ta'zeeban lahu, veneration of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. So the Shaykh mentions that, rahimahullah ta'ala. And those are things that a person needs. Allah combines them both in one ayah, in one place in Surah Al-Hijr. He says, Nabbi ibadi anni ana al-ghafuru al-rahim wa anna adabi huwa al-adabu al-alim. Nabbi inform ibadi my slaves. Tell my slaves that I am one who is forgiving, one who is merciful to his creation. Tell them and inform them of this Muhammad. And also inform them of that my punishment is what? It's a severe punishment. It can destroy you. So if these two things are filled in your heart, 
Mahabbat Allah, the love of Allah is in your heart. This, when it fills your heart, tasuquka ila ta'ati. This automatically pushes you to obeying Allah And then you're going to do fi'l bardati, everything that is pleasing to Him. And also, wa ta'zim al And also, when you are venerating Him and glorifying Him, what will it do to you? It will prevent you and stop you from what? Anil wuqu'u fi ba'asi to fall into sinning and disobeying him subhanahu wa ta'ala and to come with what? ma naha tabarak wa ta'ala ibadahu anhu and to stay away from that which he Allah tabarak wa ta'ala prohibited his slaves from you'll stay away from it point number four that the shaykh mentions an takuna mukhlisan lahu jalla wa ala that you're sincere for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala you're a what? a person who is sincere full of sincerity في عباداتك إن جواشب متوكلا عليه في جميع أحوالك You are one who relies on him سبحانه وتعالى in all of your affairs لتحقق بذلك مقام إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين Why are you doing all of that? So you can fulfill the station of إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين You can fill that station You can come with it وتستحضر قلبك And you also bring it present in your heart أنك إنما تقوم بما أمر امتثالا لأمره that you are coming with in that which he has commanded you to come with because he commanded you to come with it وتترك ما نهى عنه and that you're also leaving off ما نهى عنه that which Allah prohibited from you امتثالا لنهيه following his prohibition and his command in staying away from this فإنك بذلك because in that you are تجد لعبادة طعما when you do that you find the sweetness of the ibadah لا تدركه مع الغفلة which you will not attain through heedlessness وتجد في الأمور عولا and in all your matters you will find help منه from Allah لا يحصل لك مع الاعتماد على نفسك which you will never attain if you only rely on yourself the slave needs two things as the shaykh mentions here the person needs ikhlas and the person needs tawakkul. That's why Allah says, فَعَبُدُهُ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَيْهِ In Surah Hud. Allah says, فَعَبُدُهُ Worship him. وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَيْهِ And rely on him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you all know, the Prophet said something. He said, إِحْرِصْ عَلَى مَا يَنْفَعُكَ وَاسْتَعِمْ بِاللَّهِ إِحْرِصْ Strive in that which is going to benefit you. You come with the effort of striving. And then what do you do? وَاسْتَعِمْ بِاللَّهِ Rely on Allah You know you can't do it Your efforts are only going to take you to a particular limit But then after that what do you do? وَاسْتَعِمْ وَاسْتَعِمْ بِاللَّهِ Seek help and aid from who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And Ibn Muslim narrated this وَلِذَلِكَ Ibn Qayyim in his kitab مَدَارِجُ السَّالِكِينَ He said وَكَثِيرًا مَا كُنْتُ أَسْمَعُ شَيْخَ الْإِسْلَامِ Ibn Taymiyyah تَقَدَّسَ اللَّهُ رُوحَ did I used to hear Ibn Taymiyyah say, Ibn Taymiyyah is a student of Ibn Al-Qayyim, uh, sorry, the Sheikh of Ibn Al-Qayyim. Ibn Al-Qayyim is a student of Ibn Taymiyyah, and Ibn Taymiyyah is the teacher of Ibn Al-Qayyim. Ibn Al-Qayyim said, my teacher, Sheikh Al-Islam Taymiyyah, he said, a lot, did I used to hear him say this, Iyaka na'budu, Ibn Taymiyyah used to say this, na'budu, tadfa'u riyah, Iyaka na'budu, it deflects and pushes away Showing off. And it pushes and it deflects. Arrogance. If the person says, Oh Allah, you we worship. This is what? It gets rid of showing off. Because you're doing it for whose sake? Because remember, تَقْدِيمُ مَحَقُّ التَّأْخِيرِ يُفِيدُ الْحَصْرِ There's nobody else to we worship except you. This is ikhlas. Means I don't seek help from anybody else. In other words, you're admitting you need help. It gets rid of arrogance. Arrogance is a person who's full of himself. Ibn Qayyim said, A lot did I used to hear Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah say that. So the slave is in very great need of ikhlas and a tawakkul. Ikhlas, which is what? Sincerity. And a tawakkul is to rely on him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because wallahi, there's nothing you can attain in this world. 
if he doesn't support you and aid you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Allah aids you, then you will learn. If Allah supports you, you will reach to what you're looking for. Then Shaykh Rahimahullah, he moves on to a second point now. Which is, Ma'a Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We finished Allah, now he's moved on to the Prophet. He's now going to mention things that a student of knowledge, or a believer generally speaking, to be honest, should come with in regards to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. The Shaykh says, the first one is, أن تقدم محبته على محبة كل مخلوق. That you you give precedence, you give precedence to love of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم over the love of all creation. وهديه and you give precedence to his guidance. وسنته and his way على كل هدي وسنة over every guidance and every way you give the Prophet guidance. ولذلك the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said. والذي نفسي بيدي I swear by the Lord in which my soul is in his hand لا يؤمن أحدكم that one of you is not a true believer or one of you is not a believer حتى أكون أحبه until I become more beloved to him من والده than his parents ووالدي and his children والناس أجمعين and all of the people that the Prophet becomes more beloved to you than what that the Prophet becomes beloved to you عليه الصلاة والسلام he becomes beloved to you than your parents. He becomes more beloved to you than your children. He becomes beloved to you than everyone. When nasi ajma'in, you're not a believer. Rather, not a, that's not enough. That alone itself is not enough and it knows it's sufficient. We have to add on what we just previously mentioned, which is you have to even love him more than yourself. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, Imam al Bukhari narrated. That Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, La anta ahabu ilayya min kulli shayin. O Messenger of Allah, you are more beloved to me than everything. Illa min nafsi except myself. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet said to Umar, Abu Umar, La waladhi nafsi biyadi. No, I swear by the Lord in which my soul is in his hand. Hatta akuna no Umar. Until I become. أحب إليك من نفسك until I نبي الله محمد become more beloved to you than your own نفس. 